just to let you know a little bit about the car. The John Cooper Works Challenge started out as a little project within the factory. The guys just sort of enthusiasts and obviously some of them actually took part in the mini challenge. So they decided that though the F56 John Cooper Works was really good, they decided that they thought the John Cooper Works could be a little bit better. So what they did, they set about getting a mini John Cooper Works and developing it between those few guys from Mini Factory and Evo Magazine and put together a track day, but a nice suitable car to use on the road as well. Using the standard shell and standard engine from the John Cooper Works, the only additional bits and pieces they did add to it was a, an automated uh, windscreen wiper and they put air conditioning in but it wasn't climate control, it was just manual. And obviously the John Cooper Works Challenge has got a gear stick. The Challenge Mini is a 2 litre, 320 newton metres of torque, but a 0 to 60, just under 6 seconds. For setting up the Mini, the guys had to use the specialist help of Total Track, because obviously, though the Mini was built in the factory, Unfortunately, due to regulations, Mini couldn't actually fit all the goodies they wanted upon it at the factory because obviously they'd have to go through type approval. So they got the guys from Total Track to put the car all together, so to put the full performance pack up in Norfolk on the car. And the performance pack consisted of the full John Cooper Works Pro Kit, which is like aerodynamic bits and pieces, carbon fiber, that type of thing. Also, they added in a limited slip differential from Quip, which certainly works really, really well. The suspension was done by Neutron, which is fully adjustable. You can just set up the cameras as well for a track day if you want and also lower or higher the suspension slightly. Currently the car sits standard 20 millimeters lower than a standard John Cooper Works. Also on the front end they fitted spacers on the front wheels. The wheels are also from Team Dynamic and it's a 7.5 by 17 inch rims. And for sticky rubber, of course, they had to get the best Michelin Pilots Cup. The car package ran out at 32 grand, which today is not that bad, really, considering the incoming John Cooper Works GP3 is now around about 35k and that's a start off price. Well, owning this John Cooper Works Challenge has been a feat itself in one respect. I mean, even when I went to take buy it, most dealers hadn't even heard of a Challenge Mini, which is hard to believe. You walk into a dealer and say, oh, I wanna buy a Challenge John Cooper Works and they first thing they think of Oh, a 210. Well, a 210 isn't a John Cooper Works Challenge Mini. That's just an add-ons from the dealership. So eventually, I searched around and searched around. Eventually, I come to a dealer that actually knew what they were talking about. And they said, oh, there's none left. They're all sold out. And then out of the blue, they said, oh, we've got some cancel orders. It was five cancelled orders. Oh, I said, and I could actually choose which number I wanted, which was left really. So I chose uh, number 32 because that's the one that suited me at the time. 
once you place the order, you just had to sit and wait then for everything to be authorised. And then you've got a nice little certificate to say that you've got a John Cooper Works Challenge on its way. You paid your deposit and then you had to pay another £3,500 to total track because that's the rules. You buy the car from Mini and then total track the, the, the performance pack, they took the 3,500 quid. But it was fun in games, because when I picked my car up, the, the problem was the dealership I bought it from had just changed hands. And it's Byron's of Watford. What a bunch of Muppets they were. Uh, the car turned up, and they had it in their showroom. I took one look at the car and it looked like it had been sat around for six months. So I phones up Mini and Mini says to me, oh, well, okay, well, uh, what's the problem? Do you want your money back? I said, no, I don't want my money back. I want a brand new car, which I ordered. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, they turn around and say, oh, that's okay. Um, just get someone to look at it and let us know what was wrong with it. Because I didn't trust the dealerships at all. Because dealerships are like, they, they don't care about all they're interested in actually taking your money. Anyway, Mini UK turned round and then offered me some money back, which, hey, presto, great. Plus, on top of that, get the car fully detailed. And luckily, they said it'll go back up to total track, which I wanted anyway. And over the next six weeks, it went up to total track. It was all redone and all sorted out. Because the thing was, the, the stripes were actually peeling off the car, which, which just wasn't nice. And the wheels that came with the car was damaged. So it all had to be put right. So they just replaced everything. And weirdly enough, and then I phones up Mini and they said, oh yeah, great, your car's ready. So I said, I don't want to go back to the dealership. I want to pick it up from Total Track. So that's what we did. We sat about, went up to Total Track and picked the Mini up ourselves. And then straight after that, I took it down to Watford, the bodywork fully PPF, that's paint protection film, right the way across. Because whether I use it for track day or not, at least I've got the opportunity then, it's not going to get feathered with sheds and sheds of stone chips. But owning Challenge Mini has been exciting. It's absolutely brilliant. You can just stick your foot down and the thing just flies. Pro exhaust system, which is absolutely awesome. It's actually got a button you press which is Bluetooth to the back end, which opens and closes the valve. Which I'm sure it goes quicker when the valve is wide open. Though they claim it's not illegal on the road, but who's out there to stop you? This is what amazes me. There ain't no one gonna stop you unless you, you're blasting along and the police go past and don't like to sound your car. Well, I've been down to Wales on some the old fashioned roads, the old RAC Valleys trail staging areas. And um, I've got to say, it comes into its own. On bends, it really, you push it in, and you know that limited slip differential is actually working perfectly. Unlike the uh, GP2 IO, which has got electronic LSD, it's not, not quite the same. You can't be quite for a limited slip differential and they're not even fitting that in the new GP3 which is a shame really because actually if you buy a GP3 you want the Challenge Mini but a completely stripped out model which you certainly aren't getting now the reason I'm going down to Bristol is because whilst I've owned it, owning the vehicle a couple of little things have occurred. The actual light surrounds have practically fallen out, which they just, for some reason, they've just come loose. 
Uh, on top of that, there's um, feedback on the suspension because obviously when they built the suspension, they had problems with the bushes at the top end, uh, corrosion, so we've been told. So the job is basically to take out these bushes and replace them with a better, better bush and then on top of that, put it back together. But the problem is, it's not a straightforward job because Mini themselves have only got one set of tools for all the dealerships. There's only 53 cars, but out of 53 cars, they only can do one every six weeks. Whether I actually have that carried out today, I don't know. I'm taking it down for them to have a look at. They claim they can do it in a couple of days, but I, I don't think they realise what we're talking about. I'm going to tell you now, currently my car has only done 2,800 miles. I know it sounds like a garage queen, but I just don't get the time to use it. And I do love the car a bit, it's absolutely brilliant, it's my favourite. You can just drop it down and just floor it and it goes. And you can hear the popping. I mean, what car gives you popping apart from a Focus RS? You don't even get any popping on the new John Cooper Works GP3 because it's been muted for the UK. The question was originally, I was thinking, well, should I go in for the GP3 or stick with the Challenge Mini in my GP2? Well, I made a decision. I went down to the Mini plant. John Cooper Works GP3 sat there and it had a manual gearbox in it. What? And yet, though you can't order one with a manual gearbox, this was sat down there. Whether it's a production car or what they were planning to do originally, who knows? And today I'm also going to go out in a uh, 4x4 John Cooper Works just to try it out with the automatic. I never liked the automatic, I've tried it before. It's like an old granny's car or an old grandpa's car. Hence why the nickname for the John Cooper Works GP3 is Grandpa 3. Because the whole point of the UK, we like our manual gearboxes. So why would you want to put an automatic in a GP3? I just don't get that. But I guess it's going to be a cool car. And as soon as the um, seat delete kit comes available i'm going to whip the back seats out of this and put the gp3 delete seat parts in which would be pretty cool because realistically i don't know why the f56 has even got back seats because there's nothing you can do with them i say it's really hardcore but i don't really think it's that hardcore What I find, it, it can be a bit knocky occasionally because um, our UK roads are all over the place and sometimes you're driving along and you do get shaken about a bit but not that much. In equivalent to my GP2, it's about the same. And again, that's got adjustable Bilstein suspension on that. So again, it's a bit more hardcore. Now, when you're bombing around little lanes in that, it's just absolutely brilliant. You really find that the Challenge Mini does exactly what it says on the tin. Now, I haven't actually done a track day in this yet, but I'm yet to try Castle Coombe out. Now, I have been around Brands Hatch. That's where we went to. I knew it will come back to me eventually. Yeah, it was a great day at Brands Hatch on the track. But I took it really easy because obviously due to the fact is I 
I'd only just got the car and was running it in. I really needed to take it nice and easy. And that whole event at Brands Hatch was put on by Mini UK for all the owners. And the weird thing is, though there's 53 cars, there was only something about, oh, there must have been only about 30 of us turned up, which was absolutely brilliant. You had full track day all day long, and then Mini actually put on the racing cars, the racing challenge minis for us as well, to go out and try out, obviously not driving them. They also put on uh, the end sport vehicles, which was really pleasurable, because that's, it was really nice. The fact is you could go out in a car you've never been out in before, which was pretty cool. I'm sure that they're not gonna do the same for the GP3. But you guys, if you've got any chance of getting out in a Challenge Mini, you need to go out in one. Because once you've been out in one, you realize what the car is all about. I think personally, at 32 grand, I thought it was a really good value car. People winch like hell again about it, but I don't know why. Because for 32k, by the time you add up all the extra bits and pieces that the car's got on here, you're going to be well over 35k. So I don't know why they were saying 32 grand was so dear, but it wasn't really. Okay, you could say you didn't get all those luxuries of um, media packs and stuff like that, but then if you don't want all that stuff, what? You don't want it, do you? The same as the GP3. I mean, what's that all about? Put a media stuff for a track day car. I mean, I just think Mini Germany making the GP3 with not having a manual is absolutely stupid. They really need to wake up, really, because at the end of the day, we're the car enthusiasts that buy the Minis, and you should be listening to what we wanted. We wanted a GP3, but we also wanted the, the version you showed us, but with a manual box.